Right, you're still on mute, Karen. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. I'm going to start. Hi, everyone. I'm Karen. I'm the community manager for Helm, and I'd like to welcome everyone to the Helm Contributor Summit 2021. Um, we're really excited for you all to be here today. You know, Helm as a project has really grown over the years, and um, we know at the end of the day that it's the people and the community that help push it forward and upwards. So um, we're really honored that so many of you are here to learn with us on how to give back to um, the project by contributing. And so the Helm maintainers will be going over the different ways you can contribute to Helm and how to do so effectively. So for those of you who are curious about what it's like to be a maintainer, um, we'll spend the first half of the day going over the, um, sorry, for those of you who are interested in becoming a maintainer, we'll spend um, the second half of the day going over the maintainer structure. And um, before we get started though, just a few housekeeping items. Um, first, this event is going to be recorded. So um, as you can see, we are recording and the recording will be made available um, on the CNCF YouTube channel um, later this week, hopefully. Um, so you'll be able to catch up on everything if you don't um, catch it the first time. And then for Q&A, we will not be using the Q&A function on Bevy. Um, instead, uh, we have a channel on the CNCF Slack. It's going to be the Helm Contributor Summit 2021 um, Slack channel. So it's pretty obvious on the CNCF Slack. And I will share a link to that later if you are already if you are not already on the CNCF Slack. But again, we'll be using this Slack for Q&A, um, and this will just help us preserve the conversations for after the event so people can go back and look at things. And please make sure to thread your conversations to help it stay organized. And our maintainers will be monitoring the chat to help answer questions. And next, um, please make sure to keep your mic unmuted, or sorry, muted, which I think you all will be um, to avoid any interruptions. If anyone wants to speak, um, just, you know, you can say so in the chat on Bevy and um, one of the hosts can promote you to speaking. And lastly, um, I'd like to just ask everyone to adhere to the CNCF code of conduct. Basically, just be respectful to our presenters and our fellow participants. And with that, I will hand it over to Matt. You ready? All right. Cool. All right, thank you all for joining us today. This is our first ever Helm Contributor Summit. Uh, we've done Helm Summits in the past that have been more organized around uh, the, the in and around the community on Helm itself. And this time we wanted to uh, take the opportunity to talk more about the whole process of contributing governance and things like that. So I'm going to go through a very quick slide deck to give you an overview to learn about today. Uh, and then I will pass it on to many of the different Helm core maintainers along many different parts of the org, and you'll uh, learn a lot from them about how each one kind of does their particular thing and how you can get involved and uh, begin contributing to Helm. Uh, so I'm going to kick off with kind of a big overview to just clear up uh, some of the terminology we use uh, about how Helm is governed. So Helm is a CNCF project. Uh, Cloud Native Computing Foundation is a nonprofit that's part of the Linux Foundation that basically serves as sort of a central body where we can all uh, donate uh, open source software and have it sort of governed under a central model. So underneath the CNCF, Helm has an organization and the Helm org has many different projects, uh, but they're all tightly related to, to Helm itself. And uh, so to keep all of those projects working well together, we have one central org and the Helm community repo is where you can find out more about this org. Underneath the org, there are a whole bunch of different projects, one of which is the Helm project. And that's the project that works on the piece of software that we call Helm. <laughs> but there are several other different projects in the Helm org too, uh, including documentation, some of the GitHub uh, actions, um, uh, uh, registry and repository tools, and uh, several more that you'll hear about throughout the day. But a lot of the focus today is going to be on both the Helm core project, uh, the Helm Helm project and the Helm documentation project. We will, however, cover a number of these other things. So I wanted to lay out a couple of terms because you're gonna hear us talk about them throughout the day. So we talk about project maintainers. Every Helm repository, every piece of the Helm organization has some people who act as core maintainers. And core maintainers are responsible for taking care of that project. 
Uh, you'll hear us go into more detail about that over the day. But a project maintainer is really related to just one of those projects. You might also hear us talk about the security team. The security team is a cross project team. So we've got some core maintainers for many different uh, Helm projects that we all work together to triage security issues when a new thing comes in. And uh, we're the ones who try and roll out the security updates when necessary. Uh, you'll also hear us talk about org maintainers. So all the projects are grouped together under the big Helm org. The Helm org itself has some people that are nominated from projects to represent uh, those projects to the org itself. Uh, and we'll talk about that in particular. I'll be talking about that late this uh, later on today uh, in the second half of today's presentations. And then the last uh, term that you may hear uh, today that the, uh, that I wanted you to be aware of is emeritus maintainers. So in academia, uh, you hear about a professor who retires, they become an emeritus professor, which means they no longer have teaching or committee responsibilities at the university, right? We wanted to borrow that same concept. And when people um, retire their maintainerships, whether they're project or org maintainers, we then refer to them as emeritus maintainers, uh, and just as a, as a way of showing respect for people who have contributed uh, many hours of work to the project. Uh, okay, so now we're going to dive in a little bit to sort of an overview of how Helm itself changes. All of development of Helm takes place on GitHub. Okay, uh, we do uh, chat in Slack and in other uh, other places. We you know we we do some live uh, dev updates, but the development itself happens on GitHub. So when I use these terms, this is kind of what, what we're all, we all use the same terms together, issues, right? An issue is a GitHub issue that uh, is a bug or a request for help or something like that. When we talk about changing the Helm repo, we talk about pull requests or PRs. Uh, PRs are ways of uh, using Git's API to submit patches uh, to a project in a sort of controlled way where we can review them. So if you head over to GitHub and you interact with pretty much any of the open source projects, you'll see some combination of issues and pull requests used. Uh, but one thing that's more Helm specific is Helm improvement proposals or HIPs. Now it's actually borrowed from Python improvement, uh, improvement proposals, which are PIPs. Uh, but a HIP is a way for us to track a formal definition of a feature that we want to add in to Helm, and it gives us an extra uh, review milestone for adding features. And we'll talk about that. I'll, I'll talk about it briefly once more now, but you'll hear about it in more detail later on today. Um, and, and while I do say that HIPs are to track features, every once in a while we do put in small, small features in Helm without having them go through the HIP proposal process. And I wanted to say that up front, lest anybody uh, panic at what I'm saying. So the last kind of big thing I wanted to go through before handing it over to uh, to my co-presenters is I wanted to talk through some of the workflows that you can ex that you'll hear a lot about today. So GitHub again is our central place of doing development, and there are particular established workflows in GitHub that we use, and some of them are the way you've seen them on other projects, and others are a little different. So I wanted to start out with the documentation workflow. So we have github.com slash helm slash helm www, and that's where documentation is. Uh, if you want to change the documentation that you see on uh, helm.sh, uh, you go to this repo and you file an issue saying, hey, here's a problem with the documentation. Somebody writes the text to address that change. A new PR is open, right, a pull request that has just those changes. And then we discuss those changes and make sure that, you know, it's organized, it's clear, it's grammatically correct, it's helpful to the end user. And, uh, you know, we, on occasion we go back and forth, right? And, and uh, the person who submits the PR has to make a couple changes, then we re review it again and say, okay, everything looks good, and we approve it. Then that PR gets merged into the mainline uh, repository. And at some point that mainline gets republished and your documentation changes will show up on the site. So that's sort of the typical workflow, right? Start with an issue, do a little bit of discussion. Go to a pull request, do a little bit of discussion on whether the pull request satisfies the issue. And then if it does, we approve it and it goes on to get published. A very similar workflow exists for bugs. And uh, I think it's Adam Reese who will be talking about this uh, uh, in a couple hours from now. Uh, somebody files an issue and says, this doesn't seem to be right about Helm. And there's some discussion. Well, how do we reproduce it? Can we identify the cause? What are some possible solutions? And we discussed there in the issue queue, many of you I know have participated in this process uh, for which I'm very thankful. And at some point someone says, okay, I will, uh, I will try and fix this. 
and they write some code, uh, open a pull request, and um, and and we start to discuss that pull request. And we say, okay, uh, are there unit tests to make sure this works? Uh, does the code pass all of our quality metrics? Is it functioning properly? Are there any security issues inadvertently uh, uh, caused by this particular change? And again, we might go back and forth a little bit uh, with the author and the reviewers and uh, often the community as well. Uh, but the goal is to get that patch all, all shaped up and then merged into the main line again. So two maintainers have to sign off and say, okay, this looks good to me. Uh, and, and then at that point, it gets merged onto the main branch and we wait for a little while. And uh, when we cut our releases, which are all done on a timeline, then that patch will go in there. Um, we will cover the coding part a little bit later this morning. I, I believe Martin Hickey is going to take care of that and talk about that in more detail. I'm just trying to give a quick overview of it now. So here's the last thing I wanted to give a quick overview of. And this is the feature workflow. So this is slightly different and for a reason. Uh, we value Helm stability very, very highly right now. We know that there are, we got five plus million downloads of Helm per month. And so we know there are a lot of people relying on Helm to function properly. Introducing a feature can be dangerous because it might break something inadvertently or it might modify the way people do work in an unexpected way. So we are very careful when we introduce new features. Uh, that's why we have Helm improvement proposals, which is a written description of what your feature is going to do and how it's going to work. So a HIP is created in the community repository, not in the Helm Helm repository, and can refer to any of the projects under Helm. And uh, again, uh, Matt Fisher will go over this in detail later, but the idea is it's a written explanation of the feature. We discuss that feature a little more carefully than we discuss a, uh, discuss a bug fix. And we say, okay, does it is it addressing the problem? Is it consistent with the rest of the way Helm works? Um, does it break anything? Does it introduce any new security issues? Are there other things we need to consider? Would it be better to wait until Helm 4 to do this kind of change? And things like things of that nature. Uh, a successful HIP will get approved and then um, merged into the community repository. And then um, oftentimes the PR will start during the course of the HIP. But at that point, once the HIP is approved, then we will the maintainers will officially consider whether we are going to merge the PR as well. And the PR review turns over to, are the mechanics of the code correct? Uh, is it, are there unit tests? Are there functional tests? Is the HIP properly implemented in this PR? And things like that. And again, uh, we'll iterate a little bit back and forth, but before the two, main, two or more maintainers approve of that, and it gets merged in. Now, features don't go out in every release. They only go out in minor or major releases. So they're far less frequent um, in the code base than patch and, and security fixes, which will go in every single release. So that should give you a big overview. Again, we're gonna come back later and cover each of those things in more detail, but I wanted to give a sort of bird's eye view of how we look at maintaining health. So next up, uh, Scott Rigby is gonna jump in here and talk about repositories. I haven't talked really much about those at all. Uh, I'm, I'm waiting to pass everything on to him uh, and he'll give an introduction of that and the changes in the last year and, and how we do that kind of thing. But here's kind of an overview of the rest of the day. Uh, after Scott, Bridget's going to talk about documentation in more detail. Uh, documentation is an excellent place to jump in and get started. Um, Ronan's going to take it from Bridget and talk about the mechanics of the website. So if you want to improve the helm.sh website with CSS changes or HTML changes or things of that nature, Ronan will kind of give a, a high level of overview on how to change those kinds of things. Uh, after that, uh, Martin is going to talk about coding and coding guidelines in Helm. Uh, when you're ready to open that first PR, the stuff that Martin says, uh, first code PR against Helm Helm, the stuff that Martin tells you about will be very, very important for you. I'm really looking forward to that one. We'll have a short break there, and then uh, we will come back and I will cover governance in more detail. I'll go back to that earlier CNCF slide and explain what each of those things mean and what the security team actually does and what core maintainers responsibilities are and things of that nature. Matt Fisher is going to deep dive into the Helm improvement proposal process uh, and explain how to do one of those. So at that point at which you're really interested in starting some major features or, uh, or jumping into a HIP proposal and helping people refine those major uh, feature changes, uh, everything Matt Fisher has will be helpful there. And then Adam will walk us through the process of reviewing PRs, cutting PRs, and explain how we as maintainers really go about that process and how you can streamline that process for yourself as you issue PRs and how if you become a core maintainer, you can help out in those regards. 
Then finally, not on here, uh, Karen and I will return here and close the session down. Uh, I, I think we can tip our hand now and say there will be some awards and things like that at the end. Uh, so it's going to be an exciting uh, day here. I'm going to hand over now to Scott. I'm going to try and stop my screen sharing uh, so that he can uh, try starting his. And we'll make this first uh, transition from speaker to speaker and see how this goes. But thank you all again for being here today. I'd like to introduce Scott Rigby, one of the core maintainers of Okay, can you hear me? And see me? Wow, okay. Uh, this was going to be a complete surprise for me, <laughs> how it worked. Fantastic. Hi, everyone. Um, so yes, I, yeah, Scott Rigby. Um, I, I'm a, I work in developer experience at Weaveworks now. Um, I am, I've been involved in the Helm project for some years. I've worked, yeah, I'm one of the core maintainers. I help, I'm on the, um, the organization maintainer uh, group, which will be covered later, it sounds like. And, um, and I've, I think the primary focus that I've had within the Helm project, uh, apart from that, has been the, um, the ways that users interact with charts. So um, I had worked as a co-maintainer of the, the, the stable and incubator uh, central charts repositories before those got decentralized, um, worked a lot in helping to decentralize those. Um, and I can just, I can only, I can briefly mention what that is when, when uh, looking over the, the repos so that you have a good sense of um, what, if you're uh, as a new maintainer or as a, as a potential new maintainer or contributor or rather, um, as you're looking over the repos, you'll see various past projects and one of them is that. Um, and also I help with, I'm with the team that helps with uh, tooling that Helm, that, excuse me, that charts maintainers use to, um, to do what they need to do, including hosting Helm repos and testing their charts and so on and automating them. So I have not, I haven't actually asked if you can hear me well still. Yeah, you're doing great, you're, you're clear. Okay, awesome. Um, okay, great. Uh, and then I'm going to try screen sharing for the first time. Um, so bear with me for a second and just for everyone here, please ask questions or, um, really just feel free to interact. Um, I, I, each presenter might be different, but for me, it's very informal interactive here. Um, I simply just volunteered to, to give it overview. So, um, here is the screen share. Uh, let's see. I think I can do this here. Yes. Can you see my screen? Um, very sorry. Can you see my screen okay? I'm having trouble knowing if this is working or not. I'm going to unmute. Uh, we can see a black screen and a mouse pointer, but nothing else right now. Oh, really? OK. Um, well, hopefully, it'll just fast forward quickly. What browser are you using? I am using Chrome. Hmm. I wasn't sure if that was a mistake or not. <laughs> no, that, it, that should be like the optimal browser because I think the back end of this is Hangouts. Um, right. Yeah. Okay. Well, are we still on? I can try stopping and restarting or uh, connecting and disconnecting. Yeah, it looks still black. Okay. <laughs> well, um, okay. So I haven't planned a backup exactly, except I could. what I could do is talk through through them, that might not be as engaging, but why don't I try stopping and starting my screen share again just once and see if that helps, yes. okay? Uh, another suggestion, if you uh, jump out and jump in back here, so sometimes this can solve the, the similar technical difficulties. Okay, Ihor, you mean jumping out of Bevy and back yep, in? Yep, yep, Okay, I'll, I'll try that and we'll, you know, we'll, we'll, see, we'll see how it goes. Um, okay, yeah, fingers right back. Thank you, be right back. Yeah, so while he's doing that, uh, do we have a uh, the the times for the schedule? Are they posted somewhere, Karen? 
uh, for when we yeah. have a break. And uh, um, I, added I forgot it, to share that at the beginning. I'm sorry. <laughs> I added it to the description in the um, Helm, Helm Contributor Summit Slack channel. Um, I will also drop it in the chat here as well. All right, I dropped it in chat. I can't really format my text, so it looks a little messy, but um, that is all in specific time. With that schedule there, I can go. So, uh, so Scott will come back and, and finish up the introduction section. Uh, then we'll talk about how things change in Helm. And that whole section, which will have multiple speakers, will cover sort of the day-to-day, the -day, how you submit changes and things like that. Then after the break, we'll come back and really take more of the maintainer view of things and talk about uh, how how things are changed and how core maintainers interoperate with and what our different processes are and things like that. So the first part will be very practical about how to get started. And the second part will be oriented more toward uh, how, how core maintainers work and uh, what the inner mechanisms are. Again, with an eye for helping people who might want to be maintainers to understand what that involves. All right, Scott, looks like you're back. I'm going to hand it back over to you and let you give it a shot with the screen share. OK, great. That sounds that sounds good. Um, all right. Uh, fingers crossed. One more time. You know, but again, a worst case, I can just I can just speak to them briefly, and um, we'll be we'll be uh, everyone else's presentation will be at 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 some point referring back to these repositories, so um, you won't miss it entirely. Uh, but if that's the case, okay. Uh, can you see? Can you see um, uh, anything besides a blank screen now? Unfortunately, it's a mouse oh, no. blank screen. Oh no! There's got to be one. There's at least one, right? One in every conference. Okay. <laughs> well, um, what do you what do you think? Should I should I at this point go ahead and just speak to some of these repos briefly? I think that might be a good idea. Or or would you rather just um... go go ahead? Okay. Okay. Well, in that case, I'll in that case I'll stop sharing. Um, that doesn't really help you. Okay. Great. Well. Um, so we we only have a few minutes now. Um, sorry about the technical difficulties, but um, uh, what I'll do is I'll paste these into I'll paste these into the chat. So uh, you I'm sure you know the very first repo that you want to be looking at uh, that Matt mentioned is is um, the client and SDK um, and the website. Uh, those are here and here. Um, uh, it's important to note that the repositories are, they're not st strictly categorized at the moment, but they have different val different functions. So, so those two, you're probably most, uh, everyone here hopefully is most aware of it. And if you're not, and if you're interested in becoming aware, definitely focus your attention primarily on the Helm client and SDK uh, website, or, or excuse me, uh, repo for code, the website for, for documentation and so on. Um, uh, to get an overview, I, I guess you're going to go over this, Matt, so I won't get, get too into um, what's in the community repo, except this is where you find things about uh, governance, the process, um, or the processes for everything related to the project, Helm as a project itself, and not um, only to its primary core um, uh, client or its other um, sub-projects or tools. And Okay, there. I'll, I'll fly a little more quickly here. There are other subprojects, so um, uh, several several of them are longer term projects that uh, are expected to continue. Um, one, for example, is Chart Museum. That's 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 one that is uh, listed often because it's used um, by many people. Uh, it is it is supported. Um, there is also there are also several projects. Um, I just want to mention uh, you can kind of. Not ignore, but just keep your eyes peeled for uh, their deprecation at some point. There is a project called Monocular, which um, which that is 
getting into that category. Um, Helm Hub, I'll just paste it here. It is something that is going to be deprecated. It hasn't officially been, the repo hasn't officially been made obsolete. The tool that it ran is deprecated. It now uh, points to artifacthub.io, the CNCF aggregator for all CNCF cloud native packages. Um, and then the other things I just want to mention really briefly, I don't want to go over time really, but um, thanks, Bridget. Um, there are there are chart helper and our automation tools. And so um, just, uh, um, there's there's three of them, and it would have been nicer if I could show you, but but the one that you probably are using the most now, if you have any automation around charts whatsoever, um, is charts testing. Oh, excuse me, I actually did not type the correct. Ignore the last link, but the charts testing project it is a project written in Go that um, that does not use Helm's SDK. Um, if you're interested in contributing, um, that could really use um, some additional people. It doesn't use Helm's SDK. It uses Helm's binary on purpose so that we can test multiple versions because the point of it is not to, is not to test Helm. Helm has its own tests, but it's to has it's for uh, chart maintainers to test charts. So it's a very very helpful um, project. It allows you, for example, to uh, to install chart, basically everything you could do as a manual user with the client, uh, dry, dry runs. Um, but what it also does is automate. Uh, it allows you to put in uh, tests and automate those and also integrate with other great tools around testing. So it's very helpful for keeping things stable. Um, there's a tool called, called Chart Releaser. Uh, and that, I'm just going to briefly mention it. It, it, is, a, it is a different way of hosting Helm repos than, um, than Chart Museum. Uh, rather than running um, in cluster uh, and and running as an app a separate application, it really just leverages um, at this point GitHub. It could integrate with GitLab, but uh, uses GitHub Pages in order to host Helm repos, which is exactly what the stable and incubator repos uh, package history are doing now, thanks to GitHub. Um, there are other helper tools. Um, those two two are for chart maintainers, um, or excuse me, those two are for um, uh, people who are uh, using, um, let's say, end users using charts, um, releasers for chart maintainers, and then the Helm 2 to 3, oh, I didn't paste it, the Helm 2 to 3 plugin. Um, this, I don't know if this is a good category for it, but I, I believe it's a good helper tool for, um, for practitioners, uh, human operators as well, when they're upgrading from uh, the former version of Helm, uh, Helm 2 to the current version of Helm 3. So the last thing I think I should say, because it's now 9.32, I don't want to be too, too, um, uh, go to over um, is oh thanks Bridget is uh, there are several Helm actions and this is important for um, uh, for knowing that uh, excuse me for being able to get up to speed quickly and automate the above tools that I mentioned so um, the the releaser that allows you to post your own Helm repos without having to uh, pay for other tooling um, and the testing so. I have one demo link that I'm going to paste, and I think I'm just going to leave it at that for this section for the actions because this page has a the README has very good documentation. Well, simple and clear documentation about what the other actions are. Um, in short, there's an action for the kind the, the Kubernetes kind project, just so that you can we can do we can test charts inside of clusters that are quickly spun up um, within automation, um, and then it it wraps around the other two projects I had mentioned uh, chart. Testi testing and um, chart releasing. So it allows it allows you to um, basically get, get up to speed and running without really knowing a whole lot to start, um, but with good practices, uh, good and safe practices um, that can be supported. And then you can dive in deeper from there. Uh, there's no real magic under the hood. So um, there are several others that, uh, for example, there's a homebrew tap that helps with, uh, that helps with uh, our homebrew packages um, because we have several other binaries uh, that um, that are not in um, in the in the homebrew core yet, but um, but the rest are are really just um, there are some Docker images you might see in there that um, uh, some of them are being used, but others will be uh, made obsolete relatively in the not too distant future. Um, there are um, uh, and, I, and I think the last thing probably is just when you see the Helm slash charts uh, repository, that's one of the most contributed to repositories within the Helm org. Uh, I should I say one only because I'm not sure if it is the, but um, it is it is not the place to put effort into anymore, but you can still use that 
that repository to um, to for a history of what has happened with charts that you're using that are out in the wild now that have moved to separate repositories. It's the source code for for uh, for many many um, excuse me for charts that install many different uh, cloud native applications up to a certain point up ultimately till last fall. So I hope that helps. I'm five minutes over. Um, were there any questions that anybody had? Um, or should I just go ahead and pass the baton? Cool. Thanks, Karina. Great, yeah, I'll stay on Slack too. And um, I'm glad I got to be the guinea pig. <laughs> I hope others have better luck with their video. Okay. Good morning. Um, so I'm going to take over from Scott here and um, move on to the next section. Um, okay, so I'm going to do a screen share. Can everyone hear my voice okay? Just making sure before we go. Mm -hmm. I can hear you. You're good. Okay. All right, I am going to do a screen share. Hopefully this works. Hmm. Nothing seems to be happening, sorry. Bear with me a second. Um, I think I need to do what Scott did. I'm going to very quickly leave and come back. Um, apologies for this. I will be about hopefully just a few seconds. Um, this is where we would put on the whole music. Be right back. All right. So, uh, so we're heading into that second section. Uh, the three big topics we're going to discuss in this section will be Ronin, Ronin leading off with, uh, with sort of the mechanics of the website. Uh, followed by, I believe Bridget is following Ronan and we'll talk about documentation and then Martin is following Bridget and we'll be talking about uh, the process of coding. All right, Ronan, welcome back. Hopefully everyone can see my desktop hey. okay. Yeah, that looks okay, sorry about that, okay. Thank you for your patience, everyone. So i um, going to go through this section, which is the how things change in Helm section. So um, hopefully everyone can see these slides. Um, so this is going to be, I'm going to move pretty quickly. There's three different kind of subsections in this um, because a lot of things change in Helm. Um, so I'm going to take the first segment, which is just kind of like an overview of the website, some of the uh, tools that we use for, for running and making changes to that. And um, Bridget then is going to look at the documentation section of the website, which is probably the area that sees the most activity. We have a lot of docs, a lot of different languages. Um, and then Martin will pick it up to talk about the coding processes um, with, around working and contributing to the Helm uh, core. So without further ado, I'll just introduce myself. I'm Ronan. Um, I've been kind of doing things and contributing to some of the Helm assets for a few years. Um, the Helm website really has been around since about 2017, maybe earlier, maybe 2016. And um, it's as the project has moved into uh, the CNCF and um, you know we have a lot of like extra resources through them and they, are, they help us to um, host, run, maintain some of the tools that we use here. Um, the site is pretty busy. We get about 50 to 60K um, visitors every month. So there's a lot of traffic. As you can imagine, a lot of it is, is looking at docs and trying to figure out how to use Helm in different, in different situations, which Bridget will cover. So um, I just want to give a quick kind of run through of what's involved in that and uh, see if anyone is kind of interested in helping, you know, make edits, uh, commit changes and code to the, to the Helm dub 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 repo. So 
you know, hopefully most people here are a little bit familiar with this. This is just like the landing page explains the project. And this is like the, where you arrive at the site. And this is how most people, I guess, would have their, their gateway into Helm if they're not already looking at the GitHub repo. Um, the site really is composed of three distinct sections. We have the homepage. We have um, the doc section, which Bridget will talk about, um, which is a lot more article focused rather than explaining what Helm is. It's explaining how to use Helm. Um, localization is has been a big uh, push for us over the last probably year and a half to um, to uh, allow people in different languages and different different parts of the world to understand Helm in their own their own local language, and then the blog, which acts as kind of again like like our Twitter account um, announcements, uh, deep dives into some of the recent events around security audits and CNCF milestones and project birthdays and so forth. Um, so I'm going to show you kind of like what's behind the website. Um, all these sections, which are kind of very different in uh, in their purpose and their kind of layout, they all work off the same code base, um, which is the Helm dub 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 project. And um, you know, as as Matt was talking about with our GitHub workflow, as an open source project in the CNCF, um, we try to use GitHub for everything. So uh, we have a community repo where we kind of put things like um, you know, brand assets, um, any different kind of presentation slides, uh, fonts, things you might look look for um, if you're interacting with the project. That can be a useful place to check out. Um, Scott gave a nice run through of some of the other repos that are out there. Really, we try and keep everything published and accessible via GitHub. Um, so the website code base is, I think, as, as, as mentioned earlier, it's the Helm dub 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 repo. It's built on Yugo, which is a static site generator. Um, it is um, basically, you know, it's it's a what they call part of like the Jamstack. There's no database. It just generates Markdown files into a, a website and puts it on a, a server that people can use, and it's pretty uh, low frills and easy to maintain. So um, I'll, I'll give a look through some of those tools in a moment. Um, the Yugo site is then pushed up to Netlify through the GitHub workflow, which I'll, I'll show a, a little bit more of in a moment. Um, and it really allows us to keep things synced up and deployed pretty quickly. It's a nice light uh, kind of chain of, of, of things. So the, mm -hmm. the main repo here looks something like this. You'll see, uh, you'll see the uh, readme is pretty kind of thorough around how you run the site, how you, how you develop it and interact with Yugo. Um, the deployment, you can actually see all the different logs and so forth through Netlify. Um, every time there's a push to the project, it gets deployed as a feature branch that you can kind of like test and preview your um, your changes before they get merged and allows you to kind of test things like design changes or to see how blog posts or even documentation changes look before they're added to the site. Um, so let's see. So to look into that a little bit more, um, we're going to talk about how that looks from a pull request point of view. Matt Butcher kind of explained the project's um, GitHub workflow process. And it, it's, it's a similar process for making changes to the website. Uh, whether you're making changes to the landing page, to the documentation, to the blog, um, everything goes through uh, the Git commit and pull request review process. Um, so the project maintainers would review um, pull requests before it's eligible for merging. Before it's merging, you will see this section down here, which is the checks. Uh, we have a DCO, which is our um, commit signing process, which uh, I think Martin will be discussing in, in a bit more depth. And the second one you see here is this um, Netlify check, and that's where it renders a, a deploy preview. So it's it's nice. It allows you to see if anything's going to break before before it's uh, deployed to the site. And um, we have an example of that ready to go over here. So I'm going to show you what that currently looks like. Here's a PR from Bridget, who uh, she made this yesterday. Helm uh, updated from its um, 3.5.2 release to its 3.5.3 .3 release uh, just a, about a day or two ago. Um, but the website doesn't reflect it. It's out of date. So I'm going to very quickly review the pull request. I'm going to give it a thumbs up, and I'm going to merge it. So you can see here in files changed, uh, the version got bumped here. It's a very small pull request. I'm going to review and approve. 
And as I'm one of the, the administrators on this repo, once I have given approval to this, um, the bot turns green, my checks are all green, so I'm gonna merge. And what's gonna happen is this is very quickly gonna build and deploy the site to go from, from that version to the new one. So we can see in the, this is the Netlify interface, which is running the site. This is an account we, that is run with the CNCF. Um, we do all our builds and deploys through this. Also DNS configuration is here. Um, it very quickly is gonna build and deploy that website. And while that's happening, I'm just gonna switch over to the site here and show you what's currently up there. So go to the docs. We'll see it's showing the old version 3.5.2 as the stable version. Um, you know, within about a minute or two, that, that will be pushed up to the new. Okay, so that's kind of like the, a quick example of how it works. Bridget will get into some of the more details uh, around, you know, making changes to the docs, how versioning works, or sorry, not versioning, how localization is set up. Um, the readme really is, is pretty thorough. We have a lot of, um, good processes and things defined within the Helm project. You have contribution guides, release check, uh, checklists and so forth. Um, the doc site really is a great starting point for any questions you have. Um, and if you're curious about, about the Helm project uh, and the website, we try and use issues like um, for tracking any bugs or anything we wanna make as an enhancement or so forth. And we have a special label called good first issue, which is a nice starting point. If you're curious about how can I be of use to this project? I've been looking at this code base. Um, you know, I'm trying to figure out what small things can I do to sort of get familiar with the tooling. The good first issue label is a nice resource for that. Here's some small like things that are on my list of tasks to fix up. And uh, we always welcome contributions if anyone wants to look at this stuff. And if there's any questions around how you interact with this tooling, you know, how do you install Yugo? How do you kind of like, you know, how do you resolve maybe a, a broken build in, in Netlify? Um, you know, the Slack channel is a great place to come and ping one of us, but uh, hopefully our, our, our documentation and our readme's are pretty thorough. Okay, so I guess the bulk of things I wanted to cover, um, you know, there's a lot of different parts of the site. Been working on this for, for, for a couple of years and um, we always appreciate new people coming in with fresh eyes to look at this and notice things that we don't notice. Um, if you have questions, the Slack channel, that's, um, and set up for this event is a great place to go with your questions. You know, you can ping me if you have any specific stuff around the website, the front end, the design, love to help. Um, without further ado, I'll pass it on to Bridget because that's coming up, I think on about 10 minutes and uh, Bridget's gonna go next and we'll talk to Mark. Okay. Thank you so much, Ronan. But before you unshare your screen, you wanna show us that finished build? Yes, <laughs> I'm let's sitting do that. there waiting for it. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's a good point, let's go back Going to that. character change. Yes, it's a big deal. Um, thank you for that commit, it's awesome. Okay, so yeah, it's published, green, everything looks magical. It took one minute and 38 seconds to deploy that, which is why we love static sites because there's not a lot of uh, extra stuff to do. It's pretty swift. Uh, so if I refresh the docs homepage here, yeah, so there we go, three, five, three, and that's it. It's pretty, pretty, uh, pretty quick. So thank you for your PR. Thank you for contributing to help. No PR is too small. Yeah. Okay. okay. So now I get to try the very exciting screen share process. Oh boy. It has so many choices. I'm gonna tempt fate and try the Chrome tab even though it might be a betrayal of all. How did that work? I think it worked. Yeah, hey. I, see your, I see your slide. Fantastic. Okay, so what we're looking at here is the docs. And I think if we start by just looking at helm.sh slash docs, and we see that it's it's kind of a lot. Um, oh, exciting. Okay, now I see the difference. I'm just gonna stop sharing and restart because I have a bunch of tabs and it really only shared the one tab. How exciting. Okay, we're gonna try that. That's a little bit better because now I can actually change to other tabs. All right, so if we take a look at the Helm docs, 
that we were just on. Ooh, and I can reload that and see we're at 353 now. Hooray. Um, when we take a look at the Helm Docs, we actually have this front page that says how it's organized. And it's probably a good idea to take a look through that because the various types of docs are pretty different from each other. Uh, the tutorials are a really good place to start if you're new to Helm and you want to try something. And if you want to PR in something that says, yeah, you're making a giant leap of logic here with this tutorial, open an issue or make a PR to the docs repo and say where the tutorial uh, missed out on explaining something. The uh, topic guides, again, like oh, they're more detailed explanations, but uh, more high level, right? So key topics, um, concepts, et cetera. If we take a look at some of these, like, oh, charts, hmm, library charts, how are those different from charts? Wait, chart repositories. There's a lot of chart stuff going on here. So you can see there's a lot of detail. Again, like it goes into enough detail that depending on what high level concept you're trying to learn, the topic guides might be useful. Okay, the community guides, highly relevant to people who might want to, you know, actually contribute to something. This has the developer guide. We are constantly updating our release checklist because it turns out, um, there are a lot of steps, and like for example, updating that you know three five two to three five three. It was on a checklist, but it was step ten of eleven. What are you going to do? And um, and then we'll talk a little bit about the localizing too. Uh, the how to guides are worth taking a look at specifically because they are in more depth. So these are not necessarily you know, uh, simple topics, but they're pretty complex topics, like say developing your own charts. Okay, so there's there's a lot there. Uh, and you might be like, okay, what what's next? Where should I look? Um, let's take a look actually at the doc site itself, very meta, because if you're going to, you know, help with the docs, you probably wanna know about the docs. So is where the docs actually are. This is that repo that Ronan was in before that he was showing us, you know, the readme of. And the docs themselves are in content and then they're language specific. And so not every language is gonna have every single thing in it because it's like some of them are, like for example, there are some languages people have actually translated blog posts for and other languages they have not. Um, and the, the actual docs themselves, again, are organized somewhat like by what, what you saw earlier, but eh, you know, there's, let's talk a little bit about the, uh, what you see here versus what you see on Helm.sh. So again, you can see all of these top level things versus what actually shows up on the website. This we mentioned before is Hugo. And if we take a look at, there's front matter that needs to be on each kind of page. So again, if you try to start um, instantiating, say a new language, just take a look at what exists there already because it makes it easier to scaffold it. Uh, and I do wanna talk a little bit about that, that idea of translating the docs into an additional language. And we have a recent example that's pretty awesome of French. And so this is all community, you know, contributed stuff. People come along and they start translating. There are, you know, direct, there, there's the localization guide that is the translation guide that says exactly what you should translate or what you should configure when you're translating. Um, but there's like this config.toml that um, Ronan mentioned briefly. You have to have a section in there uh, then you have to have like your, at the at the bare minimum, probably like the index page and then whatever other pages that you want to translate can be in a pull request, you can kind of see. And how some of us, like je ne parle pas le français, je parle petit peu le français. Um, so in some cases we may not have reviewers who speak a language. So we'll just take a look and see, oh, did they do anything obvious, like leave some English in there? Maybe they don't want to do that. Or hmm, capitalization uh, could be a problem because past are case sensitive, that sort of thing. 
Uh, so if you're thinking, well, how do I help here? You can review pull requests either if they're in your language or in a different language, you know, just depending on what you speak. And then um, this, uh, you know, got merged in and we go and we look at the docs and we think, fantastic, we have French now, you know? Oh, look, we have a CSS issue that we need to fix, but we have French now, right? So uh, one other thing to note before I pass it over to talk for Martin to talk more about code is there's an interesting corner case around translation. There are um, these Helm commands, the CLI uh, commands to give you like information that you can get from the Helm uh, binary itself. This stuff is compiled into the binary in English and then people might translate it. And we just PR those translations into the website because we don't have a way to have the, binary, the Helm binary itself output other languages. So that's an interesting corner case that just keep in mind, like this kind of thing is evolving all the time. Perhaps, hey, you'll come in with a contribution to find an even better way to do that. Um, but anyways, that's the docs for the most part are in uh, the www repo. Uh, and oh, one other thing about translation, uh, it's wonderful if multiple members of the same language family want to uh, review each other's translations, because in this case, for example, um, we get a whole bunch of people you know, commenting on and um, contributing to a specific pull request, you know, saying, oh, what about this? What about this? And and iterating on it and making it better. And so if you're thinking, I want to contribute to Helm, but I'm not, you know, a Helm expert or I don't know enough Go, and so I don't know if I can, you probably can just by contributing this sort of contribution. So, all right. Um, but I did mention that a couple of those things are in the actual code base because Ron and I have been talking about Helm, Helm dub dub dub, but there's a lot going on over in Helm Helm as well. So let's talk about actual code, like actually getting the PRs merged. Uh, we have Martin Hickey joining us today to talk about that. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and let Martin share. Thank you, Bridget. Can you hear me, folks? Loud and clear. Oh, fantastic. Let's try and share here. Let's keep this uh, this looky uh, sharing going on. Uh, let me see here. OK, can you see uh, Safari? I don't see any screen share from you yet. Okay. What was the trick? Come up, go out and come back in kind of thing? Or what's gonna work here? Um, okay, let me stop sharing a second and let me try again. Uh, okay. 